In the last video, I uh, showed how to do the inverted F antenna in the microwave office, and I generated the Gerber files. Uh, in this video, I want to go over my CNC router and how to use the FlatCam software to generate G-code to run the router. This is a lot for my own purposes, just because, uh, you know, I don't do it a lot, so I want to remember between iterations just so I can get... Uh, get the settings correct. Uh, anyway, this router right here, I, I picked this up. It was pretty beat up. It was Navy surplus uh, about 14 years ago, and it was used for, I'm pretty sure it was used for drilling PCBs. It had a aluminum frame on it that would fit a 12 by 18 panel and had a drill bit already in there that was broken off. But uh, I picked the thing up and uh, refurbished it, got it all back into shape, built this metal frame down here. I have an old uh, printer stand put a vacuum on it. It's got a uh, just a small shop vac, but it's got a HEPA filter and a bag filter in it. And then a controller box right here, which has a power supply and uh, desk CNC based controller and software for it. And also put some, uh, it's got built in homing switches on the X, Y, and Z axis by adding these limit switches also. So it makes it more difficult to uh, at least crash the machine into its own uh, stops. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about this, it's got, you know, it's got stepper motors, not servos, but it's got these handles on here so you can manually drive the thing when the steppers are disengaged, which is, uh, works pretty good for positioning it. So what I've done to uh, make this thing compatible with PCBs is I taken and uh, took a, uh, a metal plate, which is slightly larger by 12 by 18, and uh, put some uh, holes in it so it would fit within the T-slots of the router. Then the router, of course, is homed at 0, 0, 0, you know, for X, Y, and Z, the lower left corner being 0, 0 for uh, X and Y. And then uh, the center of the table is approximately 225 millimeters. So what I do is uh, move the X position to 225 and call that a new home position and then took and drilled a small uh, pilot hole using an eighth inch drill bit, slightly smaller than eighth inch, and then take a reamer and ream that out so I can put a precision locating pin here. This is an eighth inch dowel pin. Uh, then I can go and uh, every 10 millimeters, I drilled a series of, another series of pilot holes and then uh, reamed those out. Actually did, did the pilot hole on here, then on the drill press did the full hole and then took the reamer and reamed them out again so they're a tight fit. So now I have a series of alignment holes, this being the home position right here, and then several locations where I can pin down a PCB. Then I can take this backer material, which is kind of like a cheap paper board, and drill a hole in it, and then do the same type of thing with my, uh, uh, here's a, a panel of Rogers Doroid, which is much smaller than 12 by 18, I think it's a nine by, nine by 12 sheet. Drill a pile, uh, hole there. Then I can take and pin that down at the home location. Then I'll take the router once and then, you know, get it pro approximately straight with tape. Then I can take the router and uh, drill a new hole at one of my pre-positioned 10 millimeter increments. And then take a razor blade to uh, clean the, deburr the hole a little bit so it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, make the board stick up. And then you can see right here I've drilled one uh, almost near the end. So now I have a precision locating pin along, pins along the y-axis. And what this allows you to do is flip the board so you can do two-sided boards and get precision alignment. This photo right here shows the, the board I did for the antenna. Uh, and you can see I use one of the alignment holes that are much closer to the home position. And it was FR4, not the uh, Rogers 5880. But if I look over at the uh, document camera here, here's my here's a sample board. Here's a 0 comma 0 home position, and then here's one of the locating pins that are uh, you know 10 millimeters in increments off the uh, off the home position. I had originally used a router from Home Depot. It was a Ryobi router and it was a real piece of crap. It had about 18 thousandths of an inch or 18 mils of run out. I ended up replacing it with this Makita router, which I also found at Home Depot. Uh, 
the requirement is that it had a need to have a dimer that would fit onto my z-axis and needed a removable base at the time the ryobi one was the only one i could find but then this came out this thing has about uh a half a mil of run out or five ten thousandths of an inch uh, i put it in a vise and measured the run out by putting this dial indicator on the inner surface of the spindle and also the nice thing about this is it has interchangeable uh, collets but you need to get a precision collet and i ended up uh, getting one from this alaire corporation they make collets for this router which have extremely low run out this is a spreadsheet I've made up that shows where I buy these tooling uh, bits from. Uh, some of Think and Tinker, some of it from Amazon. Anyway, uh, this column, I like to think in millimeters when I'm doing circuit boards, uh, but you, of course your tooling is all in English. Uh, so for instance, uh, a 0.4 millimeter trace isolation, if you go with a 15.6 mil diameter tool, you can end up with a uh, slightly under 0.4 millimeters so that is going to fit right through that isolation space uh, and I've, I've bought these in essentially uh, started with 15 then go to 31 and then 62 and 125 uh, so dub doubling in size and diameter i also have an 11 thousandths and a 3.9 thousandths which is you know used for 0.1 millimeter trace isolation it's, it's 99 microns but this doesn't seem to work very well the 0.3 millimeter or the 11 mil seems to work pretty good. Uh, and then for cutting your board out, uh, these bird end mills, since you're going to be cutting very deep, you want the end mill diameter to be about, uh, I like to choose about half the, or choose the end mill diameter to be about the thickness of the board. So this 1.6 millimeter works very well for 62,000 so uh, LFR4. And then there's a reamer and some dowel pins also that you can use for setting your board. This is the latest version of flat cam that's pre-built for Windows. It's a beta version you can download. Uh, looking at the preferences, the uh, again, I like to do everything in millimeters. It defaults to millimeters. Uh, Gerber file import. Uh, actually, this is export, but uh, Microwave Office does everything in 4.3 format for Gerber. Uh, drill files. Drill files, this... Imports correctly if I set it to 3.3, although I thought it was exported in 4.3, but leading zero suppression 3.3. Uh, let's see what else right here. 50 microns deep for the cut Z. This is the default depth that your end mill is going to cut into your material. Again, one ounce copper is 35 microns, so uh, uh, you want to probably cut a little bit slightly deeper than that. It, this is going to change depending on how flat the board is sitting on the router table. You may need to cut deeper to get through uh, material that isn't sitting as flat. And the travel Z, this is uh, one millimeter. This is how high the, when it finishes cutting, it's rapiding over to the next uh, pass, uh, how high it's going to travel above the board. And tool change is irrelevant. I don't have a tool changer on mine. Spindle speed of 30,000, that's the maximum for my router that's manually controlled on the router through a potentiometer, but uh, I like to put that in here just for the uh, tool database. And then feed rate, uh, feed rate of uh, Z feed rate, 60 millimeters per minute. Uh, so you don't want to plunge down too fast when you're going into the material, but rapid feed rate right here is uh, uh, 300 millimeters per minute works pretty good. Uh, CNC job, uh, M7 is the command to start the vacuum on my machine and the M9 G code will stop it and M2 is just an end of program because my desk CNC software complains when it doesn't see an M2 uh, code at the end of the program. Uh, the tools tab, NCC, this is non-copper clearing. This is you know also known as rub out when you want to remove copper around circuitry which is you know extremely important for RF circuits. Uh, the tool diameters, uh, 3.175 is the largest, and then, you know, go down in uh, by half steps. Uh, the, uh, we're not using uh, uh, V cutters right here, so this isn't important, but the cut Z, so 50 microns deep. Again, uh, we had the default before, so one ounce copper is 35 microns, so this should take out the copper and a little bit more. Uh, cut out tool. 
this is a 1.6 millimeter bird end mill and then a, a Z depth of uh, negative two millimeters into the board. The board is approximately 1.5 millimeters thick. So we're gonna go down a little bit into the uh, backer material. Paint tool, I think this is deprecated. This is the old way of doing rub out before these NCC uh, uh, options were here. Isolation tool, this is the, uh, uh, the 0.4 millimeter, slightly under 0.4 millimeter diameter tool. Again, uh, cut Z uh, 50 microns, negative 50 microns down to the material. And that looks like that's it for this tools tab. Uh, the, the utilities tab, I ended up deleting some of these extension lists. The desk CNC software I use uses a DNC extension. So if you delete uh, the extensions before that, it will automatically save it with a DNC extension when you export the G code. So I can go and uh, open the Gerber files. So these are the four Gerber files exported from Microwave Office. The notes file is really not needed, but we'll go ahead and import it anyway. And here you can see that uh, it imported 80 millimeters wide by uh, approximately 48 millimeters tall. Uh, the notes over here indicate the one ounce copper, the 57 mil core, and uh, the drills. Now I like to go ahead and change the colors on these. I use Altium a lot, so their default color scheme, the copper two is gonna be uh, blue. The top copper is going to be red. The board, go ahead and make that yellow. And the notes, I can go ahead and uh, delete that since it's not gonna be needed. This is a scrap piece of PCB stock. I've uh, drawn the antenna on here and overlaid a metric ruler. The antenna is about, uh, again, 80 by 48 millimeters. So the layout, when it comes out of microwave office or other CAD program, the uh, origin for the PCB is gonna be down in the lower left-hand corner. But the router home location is right here at that pin. So we need to be able to reposition the PCB so that it's not, the router doesn't cut through its alignment pins at the top and the bottom. Uh, moving the PCB upwards by about five millimeters will allow the router to clear the alignment pin. And then uh, if we imported the PCB directly, its home location would you know, align with the router's home location. So we need to be able to translate, translate the PCB about 40 millimeters uh, to the left negative coordinates and then translate it upwards by about five millimeters and that will give us a good uh, center point. And again, this is gonna be mirrored also, so we need to keep track of, uh, if we keep the mirroring axis along the Y axis, that will be easy to, uh, easy to keep track of when we go to mirror the board. And I also need to take and import the, uh, excuse me, open the drill files. And here it is right here. You can see they come up in the drill files or uh, drill holes are right where they should be. Now to reposition the board, all you have to do is uh, set the origin. So go up to edit and uh, set origin. And the grid is on a one millimeter snap. So go to the center of the board, which is at 40 millimeters and go down by five. The uh, coordinates are in the upper left hand corner. So at X equals 40, Y equals minus five, set that new origin. And now the board is going to be five millimeters off the home location for the router and then centered. And this then will be very easy to mirror because we can just mirror it around the uh, Y axis. Now, if you want to cut a PCB out of a large panel of stock, let's say a 12 by 18 sheet of 5880 and reuse that multiple times for different projects, uh, you're always going to want to keep the uh, uh, Y axis uh, zero along the uh, router's axis so you can flip that around the mounting pins alignment pins uh, so you would end up taking and setting your axis so the board ends up say up here in the left hand corner uh, wherever you have free space to cut uh, material out from that stock then you can always flip the thing around this Y axis and get the proper mirroring so uh, the first thing I want to do is generate the profile for the route out of the board because that's going to be also used to define the perimeter for the rub out or the uh, non-copper clearing. So I like to turn this stuff off right here, disable that, 
disable the copper, disable the vias. I'm going to generate two files. The first file is going to be the uh, actual uh, profile for the uh, copper rub out. So go up to board and you can see it's pulling in the uh, board Gerber file, the outline, and go to isolation routing. It really doesn't matter which router diameter you choose for this because we just need to generate a path on the outside of the board and uh, this uh, 0.4 millimeter should work fine. Generate isolation geometry and you can see that's throwing a, uh, it's generating a uh, contour around the outside of the board. So now it's generated this geometry object file. Uh, I want to take and uh, rename this and call it uh, NCC Contour and this is going to be used for the uh, NCC tool to, uh, to uh, do the copper rub out. You can go back in here and you can see it appear under, under the geometry. Now I can also go back to the board and do cutout and it's going to automatically, it's going to, you can see it's got the board Gerber file and the tool diameter of 1.6 which was set in the defaults, cutout Z depth of 2 and then gaps. I like to choose uh, uh, LR for left and right, that's going to put a, 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 a gap in here, a, essentially a mouse bite to keep the board in so we don't have to use tape to retain it. and then. Uh, uh, generate rectangular geometry since this board is rectangular. Click that and now it will generate the geometry and you can see the toolpath that's going to take right here and it's going to leave this gap. This other red line you see is the previous one we saw right here and that can be disabled. So now you can see just the toolpath for the route out. Now I'm going to disable this and go back and uh, disable the board and go ahead and look at the top copper. Now if I click the G key that will turn off the snap. Should turn off the snap. There. And go to this uh, measuring tool and zoom in and measure the distance between what looks to be the tightest space on the board and that is a distance of 0.48 so that is above the 0.4 millimeters, so we will be able to fit that that uh, 0.396 millimeter isolation tool into these gaps, and then turn the snap back on. Now, going back in and double clicking on this copper, do isolation routing, so it brings up the the copper Gerber file. So, four millimeter isolation router, and then cut depth of 50 microns and then uh, go ahead and generate isolation geometry and now you can see it's going to take and do the isolation contours all around that geometry and it generated this file called uh, uh, 0.396 underscore ISO and I call that a file it's really these aren't files these are these are these are uh, Gerber input files right here and these are geometry layers that are created. So now I can go back and enable this NCC contour and you can see that uh, it uh, surrounds the board right here. Now if I double click on this isolation geometry that it generated and say NCC tool now it's going to default to the three tool diameters I'm using for rub out and starting with the largest one it's going to give a cut depth of 50 microns then this is the important part uh, you choose a reference object and change that to geometry and then select the NCC contour and then that will tell it the NCC tool to you know stop at this contour that is generated from the board and generate the geometry and now you can see that it's has generated uh, this file right here
Now, if I turn some of this stuff off right here, let's disable this uh, NCC contour, disable the isolation, and now we're left with this uh, uh, ISO NCC file. And if you double click on that, you can see it contains this geometry object contains three different tools in it. So it's gone through and it started out with the largest tool and did that, these spiral patterns inside of here, and then went back and did the uh, switch to the next tool when it tried to get into here. It couldn't get the big one in here, so it switched to the next smaller tool and then kept going down more. And the problem is it looks like it's missing some of the isolation in here, but if we go back and turn this on right here, you can see that it didn't need to get in here because this is already taken care of by the, the isolation and the, the uh, rub out didn't need to go inside of there. So I've disabled these uh, geometry files they created. Now I want to enable the board and enable copper 2, excuse me, right here. And now you can see that this area right here where the antenna sits over on the bottom of the board needs to be isolated. So disable the board. And go back to this and say isolation routing brings in the copper 2, 396 diameter, 50 microns depth, generally ice, generate isolation geometry. It's got that now. And then it can go back. Let's disable this. Now that we have isolation, actually, let me turn that back on. Let me turn the board back on. Now you can see this this copper on the bottom has been isolated. Let's turn the board to a different color. There we go. And let's set the copper to to blue. That looks better. Now go in and um, take this right here, this isolation and then do the NCC tool and give it a reference object geometry of the NCC contour and generate geometry and now you can see it's gone through and it's going to remove the copper that's underneath the antenna and leave that uh, bottom side copper that we've isolated and it generated this new bottom side copper tube NCC file and the original copper 2 isolation file and turn this off right here. Disable, disable and you can see, yeah, disable this. You can see the NCC file that it's, excuse me, layer that it's generated. Now the stuff, the two geometry layers for copper 2 need to be flipped. And also the board cutout needs to be flipped because you're, you're going to do your processing on the top layer, then you're going to flip the board, do the uh, processing on the bottom layer, the, route, the isolation and rub out, and then do the board cutout. So you want to enable the isolation for copper 2, enable the NCC for copper 2, enable the cutout. Also, then take and control click, select those three, and then go edit, excuse me and this is the confusing part you have to do flip if you look at this tool pull out right here you can see it's got a uh, negative slope go edit flip on x-axis and now you can see it's got a positive slope so it took and mirrored this thing around the y-axis so I don't know why this thing is called flip on x-axis if it doesn't know why but anyway this is what we want to do get these two bottom layers mirrored before we generate the uh, now, go ahead and disable these plots and let's open up the drill file. Double click on that and we need to go ahead and generate the G-code for the drills. So 12 holes, uh, it's going to have a depth of 2 millimeters and then let's see, create CNC object. So now you can see the actual tool paths it's going to take in the G-code and go back over here you can see it generated this uh, 
uh, NC drill, this, excuse me, G-code file for the drill. And that's important when this is drilled, since we didn't mirror it, that's going to be drilled before the board is flipped. So go ahead and disable these two. Click, click, disable plot, and go ahead and open up the copper, top copper isolation. Zoom out, let's see, there's the isolation. Take double click on that and say generate CNC object. And now you can see the toolpath for the G code. And it's generated this file right here. Now take control click disable this one. And now enable the NCC, double click that, say generate CNC object. Actually, this one has to be, you'll notice up here, I don't have a tool changer. If you did have a tool changer, you could select all three and say generate CNC object, but we're going to have to generate three separate ones since I'm going to have to manually change the tools. So start with the top one right here and go generate CNC object. And now you can see the tool paths it's going to take for that first wide bit. Then you go back in here, double click again, select the second tool, generate CNC object. And now I added on the, new, the next tool, the smaller one, and generate a new file with an underscore one. And then go back here, do the last one, generate CNC object, and it's put in the, the smallest. It's here you can see it's added, it's pecking out some of the stuff they couldn't get with the original isolation. Now you can see it's got a uh, underscore one and underscore two. This is going to have the tool size in the description in the G code so you'll know which uh, tool to load up into the router. Now take and disable all these and do the same thing for the bottom file, the bottom side. So start with the isolation and generate CNC, and there it is. Disable and then enable this one, the NCC for the bottom. And it's all there. And then double click on that. And now we're gonna have to do the same process here. Generate CNC for that first one. And there's a file, double click again. Generate CNC for the second tool. There's a file, and then double click again, and again for the last one, and it added in that. Which technically this probably doesn't actually need to be there since the uh, router is going to take care of this copper, so that's probably optional. This one is run, but you definitely got to run the one up here to clear out that copper. And then looking at all these, they're all uh, taken, disable these right here. So now uh, we've got a drill file, right? A drill G code right here. So enable that. Double click. And it's got the uh, the turn on the vacuum, turn off the vacuum in the file. It added those uh, G codes in there. M codes, I should say save that and uh, it's got a DNC extension like we said before. You can go back and uh, enable this one, save this CNC code for the top layer isolation, save this CNC code, we should have turned that on. And then uh, Enable this one, save, enable this one, next take, takes care of the drills and the, uh, enable this, the top layers. And you can see that it's starting at the router's uh, home position where the, the location pin is. Uh, but it's not going to come down onto this. These uh, the rapid moves are shown in yellow. And now I'm going to take in, 
disable these and go ahead and uh, enable this and export these. Oops. And you notice the tool diameters in this table right here. So now I've exported all these files. Now if I look in my directory, I've got, you know, the original Gerber files that I, uh, and the log files from Microwave Office. And then uh, here's the project file. I forgot to mention you should always save this thing as you're, you know, adding geometry to it. And these are all of the, uh, excuse me, CNC files right here. This is left over from Microwave Office, which I can get rid of right now. Anyway, these are all the CNC files, G-code files that you're going to want to uh, export to the router software. If I choose one of these uh, and say open with Notepad, we can take a look at the G-code. And here you can see I opened up the first uh, NCC uh, rub out file and it's going to have the 3.175 millimeter tool diameter so when you load this up into your software you'll know to what tool to manually load into the thing and you know set the 30,000 rpm spindle and everything so this is ready to go over to the router So here's the finished uh, board. Uh, you can see the uh, the original stock, the the location holes, locating holes, and uh, the tabs for the uh, mouse bites where it was cut out. And then uh, I've done some test traces right here. Where I need to set the Z height for the router. What I'll do is I'll put the tool in the router, uh, loosen, have it loose in there, and have it drop down to the uh, the board, and then. Uh, Tighten that. Problem is when I tighten it, it pulls uh, it pulls it up slightly in the collets, and I'll turn the spindle on and manually step that down in uh, say you know 25 micron increments until I start to touch the copper. Then I'll uh, re-zero the uh, the uh, tool to uh, z height of zero right there. So you know all subsequent cuts will be 50 microns down. The problem is is this thing moves across the board. Uh, the board isn't perfectly level and may come out of the copper, so you'll need to go back then and set the Z height uh, deeper. And you end up with uh, cutting it too deep in some areas and, you know, maybe not 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 enough in the other areas. The, co the depth is really going to be uh, set by the uh, uh, shallowest point on your board. You need to set the zero height for that and it's going to cut too deep somewhere else. So uh, I think the flat cam does have... Uh, compensation for you know if your board is not perfectly flat if you know that distance height distance between this side and that side you should be able to plug that in and have it you know automatically linearly interpolate the z height along the uh, along the axis and then what i've done is added uh you know i had the 1.6 millimeter holes again for rf i like to try to keep the hole diameter approximately the same size as the board thickness uh, what I've done, and here's the back side, what I've done is just uh, stuck uh, wires in there and solder from both sides. Again, the inside of the via doesn't matter. It's the outside that, that determines the inductance. And the, the issue with that you can kind of make it out, I'll try to zoom in here in a second, uh, kind of see where the router, some passes cut deeper than others because of the board wasn't perfectly flat. So now I've zoomed in, if I take the razor knife, you can see where some of the cut depths were too uh, deep. Uh, right here, you can see this section is deeper than the isolation. This was the, the NCC, the copper rub out. It cut deeper than the isolation was. And uh, same in this area right here. So the problem is, is now that this antenna 
is not going to be uh, resonant where it should. It's going to be resonant a little bit higher because we don't have as much dielectric uh, surrounding it. You know, we have more air than dielectric since had to cut deeper to get this uh, fully isolated across the whole uh, size of the board. But, you know, the contour does look very good. It's got very good sharp contours in here.